we're going to do a video on the Kestrel 5500. I did a video on this as an unboxing video, but I thought now would be a good time to do a proper video on using it and operating it. So you have various buttons down here. You have an on off button. This is like a, a settings and a back button. That's a light button. This is for recording, which I never use. And this is for obviously up, down, left, right, and for entering your different settings. What we're gonna do is, first of all, we turn it on by pressing the bottom left hand button. And then it comes up with the battery percentage left. And then you have your time and date screen. Now to operate, use your up and down buttons to go through the different fields. But before we go through the fields, let's just go back to the time and date window. Let's enter settings. This is where you can turn on and off Bluetooth and your data port. port. And I'm gonna sidetrack those for this video. Remember the top left-hand button is the exit or back button. So the next one down, we enter with the middle button, the memory, you can see memory used, 100%. Auto store on, store rate one hour. You could change that if you wanted to, to two hours pressing right, 30 minutes pressing left. You can change how often it measures something with this, with these buttons here. I have it on one hour. Overwrite on. So even though the memory is 100% full, it's basically overwriting the very beginning. You could clear the log here, and that's everything there. Exit there. This is your graph scale, and with this, you can set high wind speed. This is for the graph, so you might actually want to set your, your wind speed quite high, maybe 62 so the top of the graph will be 62 when you see the graph but obviously if all of your wind is only five or ten miles per hour then your graph is going to be very very low so just bear that in mind so given that most of the wind that i'm in is less than 60 we'll keep it below 60. exit the next one down is temperature a high of 60. Well, again, we are not that hot in the United Kingdom. In fact, we've probably never really gone to 40 very often. So we'll maybe take it to 45. And then this is just the height of the graph that you see when you look at your history log. Probably a good idea to set the low to minus 10, for example. And you can do this for all of these settings here is a high of 3000 meters on the altitude obviously if you were in the himalayas you need to set that much higher and you can set that for every single option go into display you have auto shutdown 30 minutes you may want to change that to 15 to save your battery come down to contrast you can adjust that to the visibility backlight white or red we'll keep it on white that's obviously if you're night navigating or you want to save your eyes system enter it middle button time and date you can select there and there of course you can just change everything there using the buttons around here that should be relatively simple you can calibrate the compass here and you have your measurements here now we'll quickly go through these so these you can turn on and off because some things you may not want in your main screen you'll see in a minute so you can see that i have various things on but crosswind i've turned off because for hiking and camping i don't need a crosswind if i was flying a plane or shooting you would want crosswind on headwind again i have turned off because i don't need that for what i'm doing 
and you can see these other things. Heat index I've turned off. Dew point I've left that one on. Wet bulb off. So these are all the different density altitude. Of course I've turned off because I don't use that. And then you have three user screens, all of which are on. And then you exit top left. Here you can change your measurements. So you could have miles per hour, feet per minute, something, anyway, meters per second, kilometers per hour, obviously temperature, Fahrenheit or centigrade, pressure millibars, you could change that to other ones too, altitude you can change and that's it. Come out of that one. Language of course, English, battery, you, if you put a normal battery in you need to tell it and that is basically your settings and basic information just to quickly set up before you first use this Kestrel. In this window, left and right doesn't do anything, but if you go down to the first window, you have your compass. Now this works holding it this way, like this. You can of course change it to true north or magnetic north. You can change your variation there and you can calibrate it there. If you are interested in a calibration video, please leave a comment below. When we come down, we now have wind speed. Press right. When you first start it, you zero it with this button here and then it will take measurement as a minimum, maximum and average. And then you press it again to start it, stop, start. So you can see it's now measuring the wind speed, which is blowing <laughs> as a headwind directly towards us. And you can see it's a, a minimum speed of 10, an average speed of 12, and a maximum speed of about 16 miles per hour. And then your temperature window is the next one. If you press the right hand button, you can now see the average, minimum and maximum. Press it again and this is where you have your graph. And this is why I went for the 5500 edition. I find the data information very useful. So in order to operate this, select data and that now the middle button and that now gives you the time bottom right screen so press the left hand button and you can go back so we can see that at, te at nine o'clock this morning it was seven and a half degrees and we can go all the way back to the 23rd of march and today is the 26th of march you have about three days worth of one hour increment. And I'm pressing the right hand button to cycle forward. So the Kestrel units have two measuring devices, this history and the min, max and average. To come out of this window, you press the back button here. That brings you to that graph where it says data and then press the left hand button and twice then after temperature you have the wind chill which as you can see the temperature is 14 degrees open the plastic cover at the top for this to work but the wind chill is about 12 degrees so even with the sun the breeze is cooling it off then you have the humidity so to do the history of data you press right and right again and then you press the middle data button and now you can see the humidity levels and then when you finish you press the top left hand button and then the middle left to come out and of course you can clear the humidity there, start and stop it and clear it with this button here, this one in the middle. And then you can come down to dew point so you can see that we won't get any dew until 6 degrees centigrade. 
Now, interestingly, if you go right and right again to the data, accept data with that one in the middle, you can now see that the dew point has been very low. So if you remember the temperatures earlier on, at six o'clock this morning was about three degrees centigrade and the dew point was minus six. And that bears out because I've been here for two days and I've not had any dew whatsoever. So the dew point has consistently been below the temperature that I've experienced here. So that means obviously I can camp with my bivvy and not get wet, unless it rains, of course. Then you go down, this is your pressure. Now this Kestrel gives you two pressure units. It gives you pressure and barometric pressure. Pressure is pre-calibrated to zero, zero meters sea level. So you, you can't change this one. I believe this is also called station pressure. And I find this one particularly useful. This is one I tend to use mostly for predicting the weather. This one you have to calibrate to your height. So this one is calibrated to my height here, which is about 360 meters. So the barometric pressure at 360 meters is 1032. And at sea level, is 988. I just find I tend to use that one if I'm moving around a lot and then I forget to calibrate this one. This one is already kind of preset because you can go right, right again, into data, and if you've forgotten to set it, it doesn't matter. Basically what it means is if you forget to the barometric pressure and then you and then you remember halfway through your camp or something like that the graph is going to get, you know, thrown out because you've changed it. Whereas this one, once you get to where you're going and you don't need to mess around with it because it's already like pre-calibrated. This is how I use it. This is obviously the point where I got into camp around about right, because I got here around about five o'clock, something like that. So the whole time I've been in camp here, the air pressure, hasn't really changed at all and I haven't had to change it to this height. When you've done that you come out left and left and then like I said that's your barometric pressure and this one if you want to calibrate it you can calibrate it to the air pressure or you can calibrate it to your altitude. If you come out of your, what you're in by accident here then just exit with this one as well. Please like, subscribe, share, hit the notification button. Then you can come down to your altitude. And this obviously is useful for hiking if you want to know your altitude. And this of course works off the barometric pressure. And again, you can, you can, alter, you can alter your altitude from this measurement here using these buttons here, or you could calibrate it from your barometric pressure but realistically, you're never going to know your barometric pressure. And don't take it from the weather forecast either, because that will be at a different altitude and a different place to you. Always calibrate your barometric pressure with your altitude of where you are. And then you have your data screens where you can set up three different things on one screen. So on this screen, I've got the compass stroke heading at top wind speed and wind chill and then here i have the temperature humidity and the barometric pressure and then here i have the barometric pressure which i probably might change height and the time and these can be changed by entering here and then you can just simply change what's in them with the left and right button so you could change the barometric pressure, altitude and time in that one, exit. And then this one here, where I have the barometric pressure, I may want to change that so you enter it, you come down and then left, you change that to the pressure. Whatever you want to do, your preference. And then you're back to the date and the time. And of course, all of the 
sensors is taken from this unit in here and obviously the wind speed is taken from this and you can close it and keep it safe with this controller and this is the unit and it quite you know easily fits in the palm of your hand 125 grams including batteries it does link up to an app which i haven't really used change the batteries are quick and simple and that is the kestrel 5500 now if you choose one of the other ones you'll probably find that some of the buttons aren't on it but the, the general controls will be exactly the same the only thing is on some of the lower ones, you, you just won't get the memory functions and you won't get some of the other functions on here as well. But they all work very, very well and it's a very, very accurate measuring device. I, I, it is more expensive than your cheap Chinese things and, and cheaper uh, units. But I have to say Kestrel probably in the handheld market probably leads the field as it were a bonus tip for you when you're in your window and you want to change the settings press the settings that key and then use left and right to change centigrade to fahrenheit or the speed and you can do the same with the time just press that settings button and then you can change the time and date if necessary Anyway, it's been a bit of a long video, this one, because there's quite a lot to cover on here. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If I've missed anything or you have any questions, leave a comment below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.